Did you know that our beloved ostracods, our seed shrimp, can become predators? They can attack and harm other animals. Yes, I'll show you today. So here we are one month after building the mutated bladder snail breeding experiment using three quart jars and raising three different family lines of bladder snails, two of which have been exposed to mutagenic compounds. They have damaged DNA, and I hope to breed a number of interesting offspring off of these individuals. We are one month into the project, nearly, and we are reviewing the jars as they are right now. And here we are. Jar number one was set up as a control with normal bladder snails so that we could compare them to our mutants in time. Now, these snails have started breeding the family line just as we wanted. They've started to lay eggs and to breed with one another. But there is a problem. We have a ton of microfauna in here. Lots of ostracods. Now, I'm not too worried about the worms. They are Florida flatworms. They are harmless for my project. Thank you, Dina, for sending the worms. I love them. But these uh, ostracods are something else. These are my larger ostracods, and they are aggressive. They are dominant. I've joked about that quite a bit, but here we have proof. These guys breed very quickly, and they are aggressive. They search for food. They're not just scavenging. They're almost hunting. And it turns out that ostracods can become predators. They can go on the hunt. When their populations get too high and their food sources get too low, they will switch into a new strategy. Here they are on some bladder snail eggs, and they are trying to mob the eggs. They're trying to cover them. If they were to do this to a fish, they would try to get into the gills and suffocate the animal so that then they could feed on it. This is a rare behavior that I do not think has been recorded anywhere on the internet. So I'm pretty excited about that. Let's look again at this footage. You can see the ostracods attacking the snail. They are all over that poor animal. They are under the shell. They are all over the body. And yes, they are trying to kill the snail. At first I thought, you know, wow, look at them cleaning this poor bladder snail. But no, no, you guys, this is aggression. This is an attempt to kill and consume this animal. Now the bladder snails can breathe air. They can come up to the surface and get a breath and they'll be okay but they can be killed by stress. Yes, so these ostracods are attempting to stress out our bladder snails and kill them. And that makes me worry a great deal. You can see a few hatchlings here and there, and they are very small, and even then there's an ostracod on top of that hatchling. I know it's hard to see, but yes, he's under attack, and he was just hatched uh, a few days ago. This is not good, you guys. Uh, let's look again at the other jars. This is jar number three with the offspring of tails. This snail right here, his father or his mother, uh, had two tails. He had a, a forked foot and some other strange mutations. This guy shows a few of those traits, but not directly. And I'm hoping that his offspring will, his, his future generations, his descendants will show that. I'm hoping. But that's not the point of today's video. We're looking at the ostracods. Look. If I come over here and nudge this guppy grass, you're going to see a storm of ostracata seed shrimp everywhere. Oh my god. And all of them require food. And, you know, these jars were built in a very clean way. There's no mulm in here. There's no detritus. I didn't put any kind of leaf litter. Nothing. Water, rocks, shell, guppy grass, and some floaters. Some water meal, mainly. So there's not much food. And that makes me really concerned. I did not expect the ostracods to breed in this way. But I guess a bunch of them came into the project carrying eggs or pregnant or however they work. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. But yes, it looks like we have way too many ostracods. Now, without the snails in here, this would be fine. We would just have a very successful ostracod aquarium. Three of them. But I wouldn't really call that an accomplishment as these particular ostracods are very easy to raise. These guys are dominant. Every jar they get into, they become the dominant life form. And I believe that's because they are directly attacking my other pets. I'm pretty sure I've seen them demolish a Daphnia culture that we had running. 
and uh, my foolish attempt to create a, uh, a swarm of microfauna, um, adding Daphnia and ostracods and other things together. But yes, I believe that's what's happening. These guys will also uh, replace my other ostracods. I have a different species, and if I try to keep them together, the larger ones will kill them. They, I haven't seen that happen directly, but the little guys go extinct. So today I'm going to add some cucumber slices to each jar, hopefully to distract the ostracods and to give the bladder snails some food as well. This is not a fix though. This is a temporary measure. This is a band-aid. As those ostracods are going to eat that food, reproduce more, and become a bigger problem as we go forward. All I can do for right now is step up the feeding schedule. Now here in jar number two, I'm really concerned. I don't see any adults, no adult bladder snails in here at all. I did see an empty shell in the bottom. I believe the ostracods have killed them and consumed them. There are a few hatchlings in here, so I'm going to keep the jar running. And hopefully our little hatchlings will be able to get some food and, and grow a little bit. I'm pretty concerned, you guys. Uh, we started with two snails in each jar, and it looks like we're down to maybe one adult in two of the jars and no adults in the other. And again, just look at this footage. They are attacking my snails, and this hasn't really been documented online. I think I might be the first one. And if nothing else, you guys, I've shown you how to build a jar that triggers this response in ostracods. I've also shown you what species of ostracod I'm using. Maybe some smart scientist out there could uh, cook up a jar aquarium <laughs> with these ostracods, and they could film this action and study it more closely. There's been a ton of reports online, a few of them of divers being attacked by ostracods in the past, and uh, yeah, I think it's interesting. So, who knows, maybe somebody will find this information useful in the future. I am not a scientist, obviously. <laughs> Though one day I, I would like to go study some things, but I, I do it in my part-time, you know. I'm a practical individual, I just like to raise snails and things like that. So, you guys, moving forward, I think what we're going to do is upscale the jars I might have to give up on the uh, control group because I feel like I'm going to confuse you if I continue to run three jars at the same time. So I think that we're going to upscale the project, run two one-gallon jars using our descendants of tails in one and our mutagen-exposed bladder snails in another jar. The control group, I'll likely just set them to the side and maybe uh, just put them back into another project or just allow it to run as is, because it is kind of a nice tank. Uh, but I will be taking a bunch of the ostracods out of here with my turkey baster. <laughs> and we'll be feeding them to some of the other pets. You might see a little bit of that. Generally, I don't show my guppy tank much because people will always have something to say about a fish tank, unless it's what I would call like a million dollar build, you know. But lately, I have been showing the guppy tank more often. And to be fair, you guys are offering some very useful tips and information, so thank you. And I'll try to be a bit more brave and share the projects that you might not have seen much on the channel. So anyway, guys, my name is Terry. This is Bucket Ponds. I'm very happy to have you. If you made it through the video, oh man, I'd give you a big old hug right now. Thank you so much. Big thank you to our YouTube supporters, our members especially. You guys are great. And our Patreon supporters as well. Some of you are on both platforms, and I am very grateful. Uh, there's a few other links in the description if you'd like to make a one-time donation or just uh, show a little support for the channel. Coming up in our next video, I'll be upscaling these uh, aquariums and improving them a bit. I might even use some plants from the mutagenic pond, as I think there's a chance they may have been affected by those mutagenic compounds. We'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon with the next video.